Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. I have a very special guest with me today. So you guys have been here for a while. You know I've had significant anxiety my entire life, and you know that public speaking has been one of those things that was a major crux for me. It held me back for many years because I had such an incredible fear of it. Until recently in the past, like say five years where I've really grown as an individual and I've become more confident. And part of that has been because I speak on topics related to my passions. And I think that anytime we truly believe in something, it almost comes natural. And the more you do it, and I'm, I'm saying this because I want to encourage all of you, the more you do it, the better you become at it. But I recently interviewed, um, oh, sugar, I'm going to completely forget the person's name, but um, Gallagher was the last name, but I will link, link it into the show notes, the episode where I interviewed her and she really inspired me to put myself out there more as a speaker. And I'll link that episode so you guys can all go back because she really laid out a good template for us to follow when we are doing speaking to convert those speaking opportunities to revenue generating opportunities. So with that said, she inspired me to apply to a speaking engagement, and this is my first international speaking engagement, and the process has been very enlightening, inspiring, and Raymonda has really guided me every step of the way along with the other speakers. I think she interviewed like there were maybe 400 applicants or something, and she interviewed many, many people, and I was one of, I think, 40 selected. So For someone like me, who's always been very intimidated by speaking, to find someone see me as capable and respect me enough to invite her into her world and her community to speak to her audience was such an incredible honor. And so today I invited Raymonda to come on the show so that we can talk a little bit more about how she has built her personal brand, how she's built her community, and Then we're also going to talk a little bit about the speaking engagement because it is, like I said, an international event. It is online because of all of the chaos that's going on in the world still with COVID and everything. But there's so many opportunities for you to even join in to learn and and grow too and, and meet incredible women. So with all of that said, I'm going to bring on Ramonda to the Robin Grant Show. Welcome. Thank you so much, Robin, and some of this information you just shared, I had no idea, but I'm so excited to have you on our stage because I think your message is really powerful in the world. Well, thank you so much. So uh, listeners, I will be speaking on how to create a unique personal brand, and we'll be talking a lot about how that really starts with you, you internally, and all of the gifts and and everything that you have. So we're not going to talk too much about that, though, because I don't want to give it away, but Ramonda, will you please tell everyone how you got to this point in your journey? I know you've had a remarkable story. You've been through a lot. You have a lot of perseverance and resilience, and you truly are a shining light. Like when people start listening to you talk, your voice is soothing, your smile is gorgeous, but just tell us a little bit about your journey and what brought you to where you are today to become such an incredible personal brand and community builder. Oh, thank you so, so much for wonderful words. First of all, it never really started out as like, I want to become this brand or I want to create this community or host events like yourself. I was pretty much scared of public speaking. (laughs) And if someone told me that they would see you on stage delivering a talk, I would have been said, no way. And just now I came back from a great uh, speaking engagement myself. I started uh, in business and entrepreneurship when I was 21 with a really noble idea of reducing plastic waste in, in the industry. And so I've been a very much entrepreneur, but it wasn't it wasn't easy being an entrepreneur, especially at a young age and not having the support of other people and just trying to learn it on your own on a limited budget. It was really, really hard. So I've been through quite a bit in my 20s. And actually, after this business failed, I really fell into depression of, you know, feeling not good enough, feeling like I'm a failure. Will this ever succeed? Do I need to go and get a job? And getting a job for me was like 
the worst thing that you could think of when you have an entrepreneurial mindset. And in fact, I become unemployable because very early in my career, I pursued entrepreneurship. So I knew I had to find a way to figure it out and make a success. <laughs> so after a lot of soul searching and trying to work it out, I started to communicate with a lot more women and observe what other women were doing. And I would just go into Facebook groups and help them out and talk to them. And uh, I came up with this idea. I was like, why don't we just do an event? So I hosted one event in London in 2017, and it was a huge turnout. We had 120 people register for this event, and it was like 65 people showed up because it was a free event. And at the end, people were like, when is your next event? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't have a plan for this. And from that one event, so much has happened. Uh, my community has grown. We continue to do events. And next thing I know, we you know, created a membership platform to help other entrepreneurs because I realized that just creating such a safe space for women, they needed these resources. And that's how I got started. And in the first few years, we got to like 100,000 followers in the first year since starting I was like, what is going on? There must be a need for this, what we're doing. And events continue to be a huge thing that we do. And the last few years since the pandemic, we turned our live in-person events to virtual events because of the circumstances. But I realized the power of us women connecting globally, sharing ideas, sharing our stories. And I'll tell you a little bit more about my story. I've lost my voice and my confidence in another incident in my early 20s and it was really hard um, to build my confidence back up again and after I've done all of that I realized that I'm not alone there are other people who struggle with the same things and just the empowerment piece of having a safe space to share your story and share it with others to inspire other people so that's kind of a little bit of brief history of what I do <laughs> I love it. And you said so many beautiful things, but I think story is a connector. And anytime we share our story, I think we do provide an opportunity to empower other people. I had a conversation about this yesterday with one of my clients and so many people don't see their journey as a story that could influence other people. And so they keep quiet. They don't share it. But the more we share our stories, the more we can inspire other people and encourage them to encourage them to share their stories. And what we end up doing when we share our stories is create that domino effect of good, right? Because someone else is then inspired to take action, to overcome, to move forward instead of staying stuck in this place of maybe depression or heavy sadness or anxiety or fear or whatever it is that's holding them back. Yeah. And that's why I love doing what I do. And I put stories at the cornerstone of everything that we do. Because when you have the courage to bring your story forward, you let somebody else know that they're not alone. And mm -hmm. I didn't know when I was in my depression, I didn't have a voice and I didn't have the courage to step out and share my story because I felt ashamed and I felt afraid. I didn't know there was other people who were struggling with it. And mm -hmm. I didn't know that this story had a power in it because I was still afraid to share it until one day somebody asked me, well, why do you speak? And when that asked, that question presented itself by my mentor, Les Brown, and I was in this virtual room of like nearly 100 people, I said, Mr. Les, I know what it's like to lose your voice. And that's why I speak. And that's why I want to see other people speak. So that really sparked the passion and the purpose. And there's so much more than just sharing your story. Your story can change lives. And ever mm -hmm. since I started to share that story, I realized I was never alone as much as I felt like I was alone. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I think there's two things I want to talk about there. And one is that um, when you struggle with mental illness or a mental health challenge like anxiety or depression, you do feel isolated and you do feel shame, but that's where grace comes in. We have to give ourselves the grace to accept that, you know what? So many other people are going through this. We really truly are not alone. 
And that's, I mean, for me, you know, faith has been a big part of my journey with anxiety that, you know, it's, I I'm never alone because I have God, but there's also this, the fact that so many other people struggle, but people aren't talking about it because they're afraid of, of being judged. Right. And that's one of the reasons I wrote my book, you, me and anxiety, because I want to change that stigma. Like it's mental health is no different than cardiovascular health or, you know, someone who has diabetes, someone who has cancer, it it's a hiccup, right? It's, it's, it's a, it's a roadblock that we can get through. We can move past it when we have support and community and love and tap into additional resources that are available to us. So I love that you actually put that fear aside, put the shame aside, and did use your voice to speak. Okay, so that brings me to the question of, and I know that this is, your story is actually just recently published in a book, but I would love for you to tell us so a little bit about losing your voice and how that did change you. I didn't know at the time what was actually happening. I didn't know what it was to be depressed. I didn't know why I was struggling of, speaking and did know what happened in my life which the trauma that caused it but when you are in it you really don't know what's going on um and I didn't know what anxiety was you know until that happened but it's taken years I didn't know there was coaching I didn't know there was support I didn't know where to reach out for it so I had to go through it on my own and it was very isolating I didn't speak for two years. I would avoid social gatherings. I would avoid even going to see my family because that shame and fear that most people feel. There are people who are just afraid of speaking, right? Afraid of judgment. But then once you've gone through something so um, heartbreaking or traumatizing, you do feel that fear of judgment and shame. And like I said, I wanted to bury that story for many years and not speak of it until the question got presented to me but what you have to realize that there is power in your story there is purpose to your struggle we all go through struggles at one stage or the other you may have had blissful life and sometimes some somewhere further down the line you started to face challenges just remember that you're not alone there's other people going through it and there's a way through it and there's a purpose at the end. So then your story can become the catalyst for change. Because I remember when I started to share the story and people reached out to me and they said, wow, I feel connected to you because I've been there or I experienced it. And it's emotional. And it takes a lot of strength and courage to get up and say, this is what happened to me. But when you start to see that changing lives, that becomes your driver. And that's what became my driver to not only continue to share my story and, and be open and vulnerable about other struggles in my life, but help others and create a safe space for people to speak up. So mm -hmm. the book I've written or the chapter that I have is about a different challenge in my life, again, where I had to turn a new chapter in my life and walk away from everything that I built in my life to start a new page. And again, it was another very challenging situation in my life. But what held me through it is knowing that I made that decision that one day my courage, my courageous act of changing my life and walking away from a toxic relationship not only changed my life, but it will help other women have the courage and the strength to be self-empowered. And that's what this book is about, about sharing our stories of adversity to empower and inspire other people. Mm -hmm. And what is the title of the book? It's called Women Thrive, Inspiring True Stories of Women Overcoming Adversity. And it is a co-authored book. This is volume one of our co-authored book series and is featuring seven other amazing authors and their own life-changing stories of overcoming adversities in their lives. Yeah, I love it. And I love that you brought women together to do this alongside you. First of all, I think that it, it makes it easier when you're doing a journey or experiencing this alongside other women who have experienced something similar or have a like, you know, they're like-minded. They 
are ready to put themselves out there so to help other people. And it makes it makes such a difference in the world. So congratulations on the book. And I will link the book in the show notes for anyone who is interested and wants to um, purchase the book and, and read the book and read more about your story and how you did overcome. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about building community. And I, I'd like to start with like your personal brand first. So your personal brand is what other people think, say, and feel about you. And you have created your personal brand so well. Like it's so easy to see you online, to hear you speak, to look at what you wear, and you understand that you are a strong woman who is there to make a difference, to have an impact, and to transform lives. And it's so visible and so present. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit about, you know, the steps you took to build your personal brand. Yeah, it's been a journey. <laughs> and I think, you know, I see a lot of people who are brilliant at what they do, but they're not very good at perhaps presenting it or being vocal about it. So it was a journey for me to step into the shoes of where I am today. I think practically, if I may share some practical things that could help people, is your visual representation of your brand. I I loved photography and I actually used to do a little bit modeling when I was younger. And I found a great photographer who just loves, loves taking pictures. So me and him worked a few years. So would I would book photo shoot sessions with him. We'd go around London, take you know, just pretending to be this woman that I wanted to become, dressed up as the woman that I wanted to become in a suit or you know, holding a coffee mug and talking on its phone. <laughs> so at that stage, I mean, I was already an entrepreneur and I was already doing some amazing things, but I wasn't living where I, you know, doing the things that I do today. So stepping into who you want to become and starting to not only live it from the inside but also starting to show it on the outside mm -hmm. so the visual photography has helped me build a presence and build a lot of marketing materials that I could use to then further my mission further my voice and then speaking of your purpose your passion your mission driving that you have to become the voice behind your business for those who say well can i just hire a social media manager you can but is it your voice is it your purpose why you're doing it you have to be the representative of your brand and no matter what agency you might hire for your pr you are still your best pr agent mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's my take on personal branding to start to present to the world who you want to become you may not feel it yet you may not feel like oh, i'm quite there you'll never feel like you're there because even with every stage of your success you will want more for yourself mm -hmm. but start showing where you want to be and then the brand will build itself i didn't have to necessarily be very conscious of building a brand it built itself yeah i i love that and you know you said something and you said something about, you mentioned decision and, you know, indecision is a decision. So you have a choice to decide. And what a coach said to me one time, you know, when you're making decisions, make a decision that, you know, million dollar Robin would make, you know, and you can do this for yourself, whether you're at six figures, seven figures, whether you're at, you know, mid, like, I don't know. 50K, 75K, whatever it is, wherever you are today, whatever you're making today, start thinking of yourself as that next level, the level that you want to go to next and make decisions based on how you at that level would start making decisions. I love that. And, and just really put yourself in those shoes today and the confidence just begins to build because you see yourself as already achieving and sometimes just feeling that sense of achievement, even though it might be fictitious, it does help you take that step to get to that next level. So I love, I love that you said that. Yeah. It's just having the confidence as well to just own it. It will come, it will all come, but you got to take those steps and it honestly it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> it's not like yeah. I had a brand overnight. Brand is a long-term strategy. 
Yeah. And you have to be willing to go on that journey of creating the brand. Yeah. And you've mentioned the, you know, the word journey a few times too. And so much of what differentiates us, so much of our branding becomes what our journey has been, what experiences we've had, and then how we communicate that to the world around us. Because ultimately that's how we build relationships. That's how we become memorable. That's how we become recognizable. And it's, it's how we build trust, which determines buying practices. So, you know, everything you put out into the world is so critical for building the community based on your personal brand. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree because it's, it's people, either they resonate with you or they don't. Whether they follow you, you know, it's either they follow your mission or they say, well, it's not really for me. And just being, you don't want to appeal to everyone. You mm -hmm. want people to self-select that actually this is for them and they want to be part of it and they believe in what it is you do. I'm, I'm super passionate about the whole community part. I think it's so important in today's world where marketing is marketing costs are going up because attention spans are getting shorter. I mean, what's the solution? Loyalty. And how do you build loyalty by creating a brand that has a purpose, mission, and a sense of community for people to be part of? Mm, I love that. Listeners, I think we're going to end right there because that was such a powerful statement. And I mean, you know that brand marketing strategy is, that's just my mission. That's what I love. And to help women create that, to be able to share their stories and their journey is such, I don't know, it's just so on my heart. So you're speaking my language, Ramonda, and I love it. <laughs> But um, so will you tell the listeners, I want to just briefly talk a little bit about the summit so that, and I will put a link in the show notes so that if you're interested in attending, you can just grab that link, click on it and go and get your free seat into the summit, the virtual summit and um, attend because there's going to be so many speakers. And I went through and selected like the, the sessions that I want to attend because I know they're going to be empowering. And I have had the inside scoop to get to meet these women you know, beforehand, because we've been meeting for quite a while, but I'm telling you listeners, there are so many amazing speakers and really from, you know, there's Christian speakers, there's energy speakers. There's, there's so many speakers on different levels and different topics from, from branding to sales, to, to finance. Like it, it's really quite remarkable how many different topics there are and how many different opportunities there are to learn. But do you have anything else you want to add to that? <laughs> There's so much to say about a summit. And this is our annual event. This is our annual global event. And it's probably one of the biggest women empowerment events. We take six months to produce this event. As you all know, <laughs> you've been on this journey. But we take the time to really select the best speakers. I want to say the best, those who have powerful story, a mission, a purpose, and they're here to make a change. This isn't just another event. What I want to say to your listeners, be ready. Be ready for some changes and be ready for transformation from within. But also be ready to make a commitment. And I don't mean financial commitment. I mean commitment to yourself. Because I think in anything you want to do in life, in business, in a career, in your personal development, it's making a commitment. And you probably don't even know what you're in for to start with. But these events are life-changing. I've seen it life-changing for the speakers and I've seen it for the attendees who take the time to participate. And as you said, there are a lot of topics on healing, confidence, building purpose, branding, marketing, um, spirituality, personal development, career development. So you can pick and choose. It happens for five days. And what truly drives me is seeing these women come together share their stories, creating the safe space to communicate and to share our ideas, ask questions. But also, this is a live. I mean, it's virtual, so it's global. You can join from anywhere, but it's live. So you get the full interaction with these speakers. Some of these speakers, they're not so accessible and it's not necessarily you would be able to even work with them, but they hear spending their time and their energy to deliver transformation for you. So if you... Commit to yourself and commit some time to attending this event, which is our only happens once a year. <laughs> 
And the reason we're doing it is because March is Women's History Month. And this is a time not only to celebrate women who made history before us, but is to make history ourselves. This is our opportunity. This is our time to use our voice and to use a platform like this, to use any resources that we can to not only self-empower, but to make a difference. Because I believe if one woman is empowered, she will go on to empower so many more. And as a collective, we can change the world. So that's my personal belief. That's the mission why I want to do what I do, why I do what I do, and why I bring so many amazing speakers like yourself, Robin, who are passionate about what you do and want to be part of this big transformation in the world. Yeah, I love it so much. And I I am a big believer in the domino effect or the ripple effect of good, where if if we can transform one life and change the trajectory for them, we can change so many lives. And it, you think of it as, you know, you, you learn and you transform and then you help someone else transform and you could change the trajectory of their children or anyone involved in their life. And collectively, it's just so incredible to think about more good and more inspiration and more smiles and more love in the world that ultimately happens from just one transformation. So I thank you for the opportunity to speak, but I thank you also just for your, your passion and your light that you put into the world to, to make a difference and to give women more opportunities to create history, to change history, to, to make, I shouldn't say change history, but to change the path, right. For other people so that more history can be more positive history can be made. So how, how can the listeners find you connect with you? Sure. Well, if you wanted to attend the event, womenthrivesummit.com, and I'm sure you put it in the notes. Yes. I'm across most social media platforms, Raymond Jan. If you want to find and connect with me, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. And of course, we have some really exciting things going on through the Women Thrive community. So go ahead and find it on our Facebook. We have a magazine, which you can subscribe to and read on a monthly basis just be part of a mission and part of the community. And like I said, just bring yourself and bring your commitment to making a difference in this world. And we can all make a big, big contribution in this world. Thanks so much for being here. Listeners, if you found this episode inspiring, if you are ready to step into sharing your voice, Share the episode with other people because there are so many people that could use this just to step into their own grace, their own purpose, who may be sitting in a place of fear or depression or anxiety. So share this for a little inspiration. And if you'd be so kind to leave a rating and review, of course, my heart would be so full because that's how we get great guests like Ramonda and how we are able to inspire more and more women across the globe. So thank you so much for being here. I am so grateful for every single one of you who has your ears to your AirPods or wherever you're listening. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you next week.